In this session, we're going to discuss the grid element. The grid element is a layout or container element in the same way that the stack panel is, uh, but it works a little bit differently. Now, it gives you more fine level control if you want to lay out things in a tabular form. So in order to create a grid, um, you can open the toolbox and you can drag out the, uh, the grid element here, or as I've mentioned previously, you can simply define the element. Uh, the pages by default, or the windows by default, uh, contain uh, an empty grid. Uh, so the grid element, as you know, you can just place elements within it. Uh, if you don't make any definitions, it always plays it or places within the first row and the first column. Uh, it assumes you've always got one row, one column. Um, if you want to lay out in more than one column or more than one row, then we have to define uh, how many columns or how many rows we've got. And the way that we do that. is we type grid, column definitions, and grid row definitions. Now within these, we then set up a column definition. And I'm not going to have two tags. I'm going to self-close these just to make them uh, a little neater. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm going to have uh, three columns and two rows. So again, same thing. Uh, so for row definition, so I'll close that and give myself the second row. So now we can see on the uh, the designer here, we've got the two rows and three columns. I'm now going to take the stack panel that I had previously. And I'm going to place that within the grid. So first thing you do is set up the column definitions using grid.column definitions, and then the row definitions using grid.row definitions, and you define the rows in each um, or in turn. Um, after that is when you then place the elements within the grid as you've already seen happening. So I'm going to place the stack panel here. Now, if you don't Give it any more information we don't add the properties in it defaults to the very first column and the very first row um, now columns and rows like arrays in c sharp are zero indexed so we begin numbering from zero so the first column is zero second column is one third two and so on um, and the way to put them in the property here is um, grid dot column and we're going to say uh, put it into column one, and you see it's moved over to column one here. If we change it to two, it move into the third column, and so on and so forth. Uh, to define which row you're in, by default it sets to the first or the zero index row. Um, so grid dot row, and I'm going to set that to be one, which will be the second row. And that's how easy it is in order to sort of set up a grid and place elements within it. Um, the key things really to remember are inside the grid, the column definitions and the row definitions are prefixed with grid because they are properties of grid, so grid.column definitions, um, and then you can define the column definitions themselves. Same with the row definitions, grid.row definitions, and then the actual properties on the elements that you want to place within a particular location, grid.column and grid.row. Now there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is, at the moment, it's set everything to be uniform. So you can actually set properties on the columns. You can say, I want a, a width, a max width, minimum width, etc. Um, and you can set them to auto, or you can set them to a special key, which is star. So if I say width is star on the columns, then this is kind of like um, auto-sizing them relatively, because I can have, uh, say, two star. Now, if you add up all of the number of stars here, I've got a two and then another two, so I've got four stars worth of width in total, you can see that the two star is taking up half of the width. Okay, um, And you can use these in any proportions you like in order to sort of space them out. You can also use um, numeric uh, width definitions here. You can state you, know, you want a particular one to be 100 pixels, um, whatever else you want to do as you would normally use the width element. 
Okay, and it's exactly the same for the row definitions. You can set the height in the same way. Again, it will default to the, the star for all of the rows if you don't uh, assign that value.